right. So I'm always amazed at anyone who talks about this podcast. Like, it's a very pleasantly surprised that people yes. actually listen to it. Yeah, so am I. I was talking to someone the other day and we're talking about the marshmallow story. Yep. Really? Yeah. Yeah, there you and, go. Uh, and they were like, but Steve's not cute. No. <laughs> and they were like, to be honest, Steve is very good looking. Aww. And she was a girl. And oh. I was like, I was like, yeah, I would buy him a marshmallow. Hmm? You can have my marshmallows anytime. You've never bought marshmallows. Yeah, but I'm not a big marshmallow Gift person. Buyer. No, I like buying gifts. You know who ruined that for me? Marshmallows? No, gifts. Gift buying. Who? Kush. Why? Because buying her a gift is, is literally the worst thing in the world. I remember I bought her earrings once. They were yeah. like really pretty earrings. She's and like, I don't do jewelry. Yes. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, no, it wasn't even I don't do jewelry. It was like, oh, like how much you spend on them? Why did mm. you buy them? And then I bought her a ring and she lost it. Um, so, yeah, like. That's why you don't really buy gifts anymore? Yeah, because yeah. like, like I used to love buying gifts. If you ever want to buy me a gift, beer. Beer, yeah. Just buy me a six pack of beer and I'm happy. Okay. That's all I want ever, six pack of beer. But do you want good beers or do you want VB? I want Swindlers. Oh yeah, that's fair. That's good beers. Did you see the thing that I sent you? Yeah, that was very funny. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) About VB drinkers. Did you like the thing I sent you about the Snatch Ball? Yes, I did. (laughs) (laughs) Jeffrey Epstein is alive, for sure. Although we probably shouldn't say that on here. That's probably like... um, (laughs) That'll get us censored. That'll that'll get flagged. Killed. That'll get flagged, Mm. for sure. Should we introduce the podcast? Yes, you can go for it. Alrighty guys, welcome to episode eight or nine, depending on how we go with getting our other podcast up from last week. Um, So depending on where we're at, we're either at episode eight or nine of the Uneducated Opinions, where it's just two guys sitting around having a chat. Uh, Generally, when the conversation starts to flow, guys don't really know what they're talking about, but they'll still act like they do on almost any subject. So that's pretty much the premise for this podcast. And we're not a sexist cast. So when we say guys, we mean guys, plural, inclusive of women too. Yes. I know. Yes. However, of, we'll never have a girl on this podcast. Well, no, I'm just saying that I know plenty of women that after a few drinks will talk absolute shit as well. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Some of them don't even need a drink to do it. Some of them just talk shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like Kush, for example. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She's a good example of that. For sure. So we should point out again, um, and it was a discussion that we had yesterday, but I feel like despite what the facade may make you believe, um, we're not actually huge beer drinkers and it is eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm not that much of a beer drinker that I'm cracking one at this time. Uh, So we're again, drinking coffee from the same coffee shop that we did last time. Mm, And I got another mocha. And you got another mocha. Mine has an M on it. Yes. Because Andy still is not manly enough to drink real coffee just yet. Wait, what is that? Is that a cappuccino? Just a cappuccino, yeah. I would drink a cappuccino. Would you? Oh, I'll get you cappuccinos from now on. No, but I, I would enjoy a mocha more. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll keep getting the mochas. <laughs> that's fine. I really appreciate that, like, you go out of your way to go pick this up on the way here. Mm, well, otherwise I'd be here too early. Mm. But also, it's just, it's very kind. Oh, you're you're like, you're very thoughtful, Steve. Oh. You're not just a pretty face. Mm. Thank you. I d- hope you don't <laughs> let this go to your head, but like you are actually very thoughtful. Thank you. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, okay, I think that a good thing that I wanted to talk about today, not so a good thing, and I think you're going to enjoy it because um, it bugs me sometimes. Okay. It's one, yeah. <laughs> one of those things that bugs me. And I think one of the reasons why... Um, you and me have been friends for so long and still continue to be good friends is this point, which is a loyalty amongst friends in the fact that like if someone, wouldn't matter who it was, if it was another friend, whatever, if someone was to bad mouth you, I'd back you up. You'd probably help them bad mouth me, <laughs> but, but I'd back you up if someone was bad mouthing you. There's that, I've always got this thing with my close friends of like, if they need a hand with something, I'll be there to give them a hand. Like if I've ever needed a hand with something like with moving house or whatever, you've always stuck your hand up to help out. Um, If I'm having people over, you're always the first person to say you'll be there. And that is a big thing to me. But one of my pet peeves is 
or something that's pissed me off in recent times um, and has since I was probably younger is people that you feel like you put a lot of effort into being loyal towards um, and that kind of is not reciprocated in mm. the end. Um, whether that be just through social interactions or whatever, like I feel like in the last couple of years I've had good friends, friends that like I would jump in front of a bus for, but, and then those people do not reciprocate even on a basic level. And that really hits home for me. Right in the feels. Right in the feels, yeah. Right in the feels. And I think um, we spoke a couple of weeks ago about holding grudges um, and how you said to me that there are some grudges that you can hold long term. Um, and I said, I'm not really a grudgy person. I think that's the one thing that I can hold a grudge for. Like I've got grudges six years deep that I can hold for that for like a little bit of a stab in the back feeling that I'm like, eh, I can't be friends with you ever again. Yep. Sorry. Do you have anything like that? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I also feel that way. There are some people that I look at and I'm like, sometimes I'm like, this person is too good to be my friend. Um, like Shannon's like one of them. Like he's mm. loyal to a fault where he'd mm. almost put... Uh, you before himself. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, that's a bad... That's good. That's a good yeah. friend to have. He's a good friend to have, but yeah. it might not be the healthiest thing for him. Mm. Uh, but he, like, like I would do, if, if Shannon rang me up now mm. and was like, first off, I don't know how he would because my phone's on flight mode mm. because I'm a professional podcaster. Mm. I've done this for a while. But My phone is also on flight mode. <laughs> <laughs> Just pointing that out. <laughs> so if he tried to call me, it also would not go yeah, through. But if, he, like, if I was at work or if I was somewhere else and he called me and was like, hey, like, I really need help, You'd be like, I'd I'm be working instantly. Moment, so I can't. No, no, I would leave work <laughs> yeah, to go. Yeah, Even yeah, if I was at sure. the gym working, yeah. I would leave work. If if I was when I was working somewhere else mm. at another gym, I would leave that gym and go help him mm. out because he'd only call if it was a big like a, if it was actually an issue. Mm. Uh, so he's someone that's like that, and yeah, again, like there are some people that just seem like they're really fun, mm. but they're shallow friends. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I have a few of those. You have a few of those shallow friends. I think that you really enjoy hanging out with them when you go out, but um, if shit were to hit the fan, like they're going to be the first person to sort of Disappear. Fa fade away into the darkness. They're not yep. going to be there to help you out. Um, and that's what really bugs me. Like, I think the, my close friends, like, I think it's, it started for me because I've had such a good relationship with my cousins mm. growing up and because, like, you got that family relationship where you're like, you die for your family, right? And Is I that think, annoying you as well, that yeah, bug? Yeah, that bug, yeah. yeah. And it um, has then transferred for me into like my close friends, where my close friends are like my family. So it's that loyalty thing is there like that in the same way that you wouldn't throw your brother or sister in the mud. Maybe a little bit, but... <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I just spat all over you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's filthy. <laughs> Gross. I'm so oh, sorry. That's right. But, um, <laughs> so like with my cousins, like, it's I just remember. <laughs> what did you remember? Don't worry. <laughs> Something you did to your sister? Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> did you throw her in mud? Just, we'll just <laughs> skip us <past that>, up. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so for those that aren't watching this, I just spat all over Steve <laughs> yeah. when I laugh. Um, yeah, that just, I was thinking about it yesterday when we were, after we finished up doing the other podcast and just came into my head for some reason that like with just that loyalty thing and how I remembered a couple of friends that I've kind of been since being like, yeah, nah, like I'm not really hanging out with you anymore. Yeah. Like you've kind of lost my faith and now like I'm not going to go back to that. And I think it's almost worse when you held someone in such high regard and they did it. Whereas like if it was someone that like you were an acquaintance with and you kind of hung out with when you're at a party sort of thing, if they stab you in the back, you can kind of be like, yeah. And then if you see them out, you can probably still be cordial cordial and civil. But when it was someone that like you held in such high esteem and then they do that, it's almost like you see them out and it's just like, I don't even want anything to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. There are people that I will, um, like if I walk past them on the street, uh, I'd probably, I probably like I wouldn't go out of my way to like so, if they if they were on the other side of the street, mm. I wouldn't cross the road for them. But there are other people that like if I saw you on the other side of the street yeah. and it was like Parramatta Road, like I would I would Make go through effort. that yeah. traffic 
you know, like Parramatta Road's like crazy. Yeah. I would run across that road to say hi to you. Yeah, for sure. Steve! Wait, Steve! <laughs> <laughs> and I'd probably scurry the other way <laughs> nice and quick. Cover your face and we'll keep walking. Do you have people that you do that to? I had this conversation with a friend the other day that you, people that you know and you see them out, but you both kind of like don't want to have that conversation. So you both kind of like dip your head and pretend you didn't see each other and walk yeah. the other way. Yeah, there, a couple are, of people like there that. are definitely people like that. We talked about one yesterday where like if I saw them out on the street, oh, I would yeah, just be like... Sure. Yeah, there's one uh, clear person in my mind as I'm talking about this and I think that's why you keep smiling at me because you have a rough idea. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Um, but then even... I'll give you a good example of one that really ticked me off the other day. And some of my other friends have been like, oh, why aren't you coming out to these things anymore? And, um, and if he listens, he won't listen to this podcast, but if he does, you know how annoyed I am now. Um, I now live on the other side of the Hawks River mm. and I got a phone call an hour and a half before I had to submit an assignment. So I ended up submitting this assignment late so I could go help this friend. So he rung me and he had gotten bogged full driving in Riverston. Yep. So it's a 45, 50 minute drive for me. And I was like, is there anyone closer? Both ways. Both ways, yeah. I was like, is there anyone closer? And he's like, nah, man, no one's answering their phones. Can you come help me out? And I was like, yeah, okay, no worries. I'll come help you out. So I sacrificed the assignment. I'll submit it a little bit late. I'll lose 10%, fuck it, whatever. Um, I go, I eventually drag him out. And as I'm getting him out, the winch on the ute trips something in the starter motor trips a fuse so then I can't start the car so I've gotten him out and I start can't start the car now he's with his missus and him and his missus have a party to get to so they leave me in the bush with my car that's not starting to go to the party after I've dragged them out what are you serious yeah after I've driven 50 minutes in to go and help him out submitting an assignment late my car stops and they leave so then I have to call another mate to come help me out Dude. Yeah. So like now when someone's like, oh, why aren't you coming over to such and such a place to have beers? And I'm like, because I just don't want to hang out with him. That is messed up. Yeah. What a dickhead. Yeah. Mm. You know, I don't use this word likely, lightly. <laughs> don't use the word on But he's a fucking cunt. <laughs> We're going to get censored for that. <laughs> How? I'm sure YouTube doesn't mind in this scenario. <laughs> yeah. That is know. a terrible person. Yeah. And I, I really don't like that word. Yeah. But that's the definition. You use it a lot for God. <laughs> well, I don't use it in a professional capacity. <laughs> no, yeah, that's But true. in a professional capacity, I would say that. Mm. Wow. Yeah. What a bad person. Mm. Horrible. I hope he falls into quicksand and dies. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this, I don't hope you die, but like you're a prick. Yeah. I just want him trapped somewhere forever. <laughs> Yeah, so that was uh, one that still now, like a couple months on, I'm still looking back at it and I'm like, fuck, that makes me angry. Yes, that mm. makes, I am angry for you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. There's not the much that can provoke me into the C-bomb and that mm. was it. Mm. Okay, good segue from the loyalty card. This is something that we have discussed in friends groups pretty regularly. Um, is how long after... Or what, what are the rules on approaching or going out with a girl that... Or boy. Or boy that has previously had a fling or relationship with a friend of yours, male or female, working either way. Um, and the reason why we spoke about this was because within the friends group that I used to hang out with a lot and spend a lot of time, Everyone's hanging out with you, yeah? What are you... You can't make a joke. What joke are you making? I don't even know where you're going with it. <laughs> Keep going. Um, there are some jokes that shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, like, a lot of friends groups growing up end up being pretty, like... Close. Incestral, like, for uh, the yeah. want of a better term, being that, like, you got male, female group of friends, everyone's ends up dating each other or sleeping with each other or whatever. So, at, Especially if, as you're growing up. As you're growing up, especially. So at what point uh, does me at 22, are they allowed to go and date a girl that your friend dated for a year to two years ago when he was 18 mm. sort of thing? Um, and because the reason why is we've got a couple of friends that obviously get around a fair bit 
And if you go off the rule of you can't date anyone that your mate has previously hooked up or slept with, you're really narrowing the field of people that you can actually go out with if you can't go out with anyone that has ever had a thing with any of your friends. Yeah. Like all the people that you associate with have had a thing with one of your friends. Like, yeah. So where is that line? Like when are you allowed to go out with someone? Like is it something that you have to ask your mate? Mm. That's a tough question. Mm. Uh, I am hesitant to ever say that you should ask your friend uh, because one, that implies that at one point you own the other person. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, you yeah. can never own your partner. Mm. Uh, at the same time, it's important to respect a friend's feelings. Feelings, yeah. Uh, Unless it's that guy you were talking about before, <laughs> in which case, who cares? Is that the guy? No. Oh, no, no, no. no, no, no. Um, yeah. Uh, so, like, taking those two things into account, I guess it's the same as asking a dad if you can marry their daughter. Like, it's not something that is actually important in reality, because, mm. like, that it also implies that he owns her. Mm. But at the same time, you would do it because you want to, you know, keep your relationships. Yeah, and you'll start off on the right foot, yes. especially. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you definitely got to pick your battles there as well. Like, there's some people where you definitely have to ask, and then there's other th where it's kind of like, mm. and that depends on your relationship with the father as well. That's true. Mm. And uh, that works the same way as with the friend as well. Like, if it's a really close friend, you should probably. Maybe not ask, is it okay, but mention it and see how they feel about it. Mm. Yeah, and you know, the other thing is... Because you've got to wonder whether if cutting ties with a friend is worth whatever relationship you're moving into. That's well. true. And sometimes the friendship that you have with your partner is deeper than the friendship you have with your, your friend. friend. Yeah. Uh, in that case, you know, like, what are you actually doing? Like, you can't deny one friendship for another, or mm. especially if it's a closer friendship. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's weird. And I think that is an issue for young people. Mm. It's not an issue as you get older. Mm. Because as you get older, people are a, a bit more mature about it. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. yeah. What actually becomes an issue as you're older is when you have friends that break up. Yes, that does become an issue. So for example, if like you were friends with me and Kush, yeah. um, and this is not an issue because Sorry, because she's in Vancouver. Yeah. So like as a matter of proximity, when we break up, it's going to be <laughs> me that you have to hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if that wasn't the case, yeah. you know, you'd have to, like, would you have to choose? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I've actually thought that through before. And say if you've got a 50-50 relationship with both people and my... So this has happened to me previously with a group, two friends that mm. had a massive blow up with each other and they don't talk anymore. They hate each other's guts. Um, and I'm still quite close with both of them. Like I'll still hang out with both of them yeah. regularly. Um, and the thought that I've always put in my head was if I was ever to be delivered an ultimatum from one of them, the one that asked, that gave me the ultimatum would be the one that got cut. Yeah. Like that's always what works in my head. Like if you, if you're all the one that can't deal with the fact that I'm friends with both of you, yeah. then you're the one that I'll cut. Like, if you ask that of me, then you'll be the one that goes. Yeah. What if they both ask it of you at the same time? Then they'll both go. Okay. Because <laughs> the other option you can do is like, there is a... Lie. Well, there's a lie. You could lie. You could be like, no, I'm not talking to them. <laughs> um, or you could always do what they did in the Bible and offer to cut yourself in half and see what, which one is like, no, 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 don't cut yourself in half. Mm. Just give, it to, give yourself to the other person. And then you're like, oh, you're a true friend because you didn't mm. want me to die for you. And then you go with them. Because that's like a Bible story, right? Is it? Go show how well read you are. Well read I am. <laughs> <laughs> you're more well read in something that you don't even care about. Well, I, that's a story that really sticks out to me. Because mm. it's King Solomon. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. Mm, but the it. story is that these two, well, th there were two women with babies. 
one of them's baby died overnight. She may have, you know, slept on top of it, whatever. And then they both bring the baby that's alive to the king, saying, like, this is my baby. She says it's hers, but it's actually mine. Blah, blah. And the king says, okay, let's cut the baby in half. And you guys can both have half a baby each, mm. which obviously doesn't work mm. because babies are living. And if you cut them in half, they're not going to function appropriately. <laughs> and the mother that obviously the baby is actually hers says, no, give the baby to the other lady. I want the baby to live. Yeah. Whereas the other mum's like, yeah, that seems fair. Because a mother that would steal someone else's baby is probably not in the, the right frame of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, she can always steal another baby somewhere else. Mm. This one doesn't work out. Yeah. And then the king's like, okay, you're obviously the mother because you didn't want your baby to die. You get the baby. Yeah. Other lady. Off with your head. Off, maybe, probably, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so that's the story. And that's yeah. where I was getting at. Oh, there you go. Uh, infinite moral guidance. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the Bible is good for a couple of things. And it helped you in the situation. Because mm. now you have another option. Yes, that's true. Now I have a third option. Do you have, um, although I feel like as soon as I type a message, it's like, do you guys just want me to cut myself in half? No one's going to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a legitimate threat. Yeah. Are you guys in a group chat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> apparently we are now. <laughs> but apparently they get along better than I thought they did. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you listen to the podcast with John Hopkins? No. Nope. No, not John Hopkins. Sorry, you've got it in my head after yesterday's conversation. Oh. Um, Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. Who is he? Uh, he's the one that wrote like... Uh, God, oh, the anti-religion guy? Yeah, God is yeah. an Illusion. He did yes. a podcast with um, Rogan the other day. I did listen to that. Did you listen to it? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, British people sound so proper. They do, yeah. And he seems so smart and well-read because he speaks... Proper. Proper. Mm. He would not drop the C-bomb like I did. No, he wouldn't. But that's because he's English and they're all guns. They're all <laughs> proper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my point was when I was listening to that podcast, right, I very much agree with a lot of the things that he said, mm -hmm. that he says. One of the things that bugs me about that type of person, right, is that because they're so science-based, right, they're so science-based and they are, he's so positive in the way that he can prove, maybe he can't, pr he can't prove that there's no God because you can't, it's not, you can't have a qualitative measure for it, so you can't prove it scientifically, but yeah. you can prove how everything else that everyone said happened by God happened. You can yeah. prove that. So therefore, proof of that is proof of no God, right? Yeah. So that's the theory behind it. But the only thing that bothers me about his arguments, and I've thought about this a lot, is, I feel like if you were to say to him, can you tell me with 100% no doubt in your mind, scientifically, that there is definitely no high power? Like, can you tell me 100% there's not a shred of doubt anywhere? He would say yes. Would he? I think so, yeah. Listening to the way that he talks, I would mm. say yes. He was, whereas I feel like no one can actually say that properly like no one no one knows no one's been to infinite space no one no one can tell me what's at the end of the universe oh it depends how much acid you've had yeah exactly <laughs> no one can tell me what's at the end of the universe so since he can't tell me that i don't think he can tell me 100 percent without a doubt in his mind what there is but for the sake of his argument he says that he can yeah does that make sense like, because if he admitted to it, I think he'd be throwing himself under the bus for Yeah, like he's dug himself scrutiny. into a hole. Yeah, you've dug yourself. Yeah, I'm looking at your shirt. Ah. Yeah, you, he's dug you keep just looking at it. That's yeah, I, like. the red N is sticking out to me. Ah, yeah, okay. Because, I, yeah, I keep looking. I'm like, did I spit on myself? No, again? just the red N is sticking out to me. <laughs> and he's wearing his sandbag gang shirt and the N is sticking out at me. Mm. What sticks out to me is that this is very faded on your t-shirt. Mm, it was made that way. Ah, because I was like, oh, dude, what's happening there? That's how I bought it. Because, like, eventually it'd just say Ennard instead of Leonard. 
Yeah. Is that how you would pronounce it? Yeah, I just... Or Eonid. Is it Leonid? It's oh. Leonid. Yeah. Leonid. Okay, fair enough. Is that not how you pronounce it? I, sorry, this is going way off topic because your subject is very interesting to me. What, the loyalty one? No, the oh, religion the one. Richard yeah, I, one. I think so. I think you can definitely paint yourself into a corner. I, and I think I proved that yesterday when I went on my vegan rant. Yeah. Or last week for you guys listening. Yeah, I think you can go so deep into any argument that even if you realise you're wrong, there's really no turning back. Yeah, and that's exactly what I did yesterday. Hmm. Because I realised afterwards that I was speaking from like just a passionate place. <laughs> yeah. Where like I don't really care that much. No, um, not at all. But I was just in a bad mood mm. and had to rant. Mm. And that was my vehicle. Mm. Vehicle. Mm. Is, anyway, there, is anyone from the AWF going to listen to this podcast? Uh, probably not. But I want to keep going. <laughs> I have no problem with uh, there being a God. Mm. Uh, if you told me that there is a God, that wouldn't uh, surprise me. Mm. Uh, if you told me there isn't... Like, there's always that... I, I forgot who it was, but there was, a, there was a scientist that was, you know, that went to church on Sunday and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And, and the thought process behind that was that, you know, if there is a God, and they want me to go to church or whatever it is. Mm, I'm watching the bug. Yeah, no. I can see it too. <laughs> I was trying to get it. I don't know if I got it. Um, but that's going to show up on the microphone. Yeah. So. Um, but if I, go, if I go to church on Sundays for that one hour or whatever it is, and that saves me from internal damnation, the, the probability of there being a God and me going to heaven because I go to church on Sundays and living a good life is probably enough. Mm that it's worthwhile for me to do that. But then do you have to question whether if the whole reason why you're going to church for one hour on a Sunday is on the off chance that maybe there's a God that yeah. you don't really wholeheartedly believe in and you're only doing it just in case you have to spend eternity in hell? I think maybe that sends you to hell anyway. Yes, so that's, that's a thing that's explored. Have you watched A Good Place? Yes. Yes, it's um, bit, I haven't watched it through, but I've watched like whole episodes. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's a bit of a premise on that is, you know, like, do you have to be doing good for good's sake or are you doing good for the sake of getting into heaven? Mm. I really liked, as long as we're on the topic of TV shows yeah. that discuss things, even though this is definitely not the point of the show at all, but that show Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. I really like... Not, um, not, not that I like the premise, but I feel like if it was, if hell was a real place, this is how it would be mm. dictated. And that is that um, in that show, it's your own looking back on your life and guilt about things that you've done or the way that you've lived is what dictates whether or not you go to hell. Yes. So like if you've done things in your lifetime that you look back on and go deep down, you're like, I probably deserve to be punished for that. You get punished in that way. Then you get punished in that way. Whereas like um, like in one of the episodes in that show, the whole hell is so this guy reliving um, the scenario where he made a big mistake, yeah. like a big uh, moral or ethical decision that was bad. Um, and it's him reliving that over and over and over. And that's just his hell. Just every time he just repeats that situation of yeah. him doing it and then feeling that remorse afterwards. Well, that's such a deep philosophical conundrum because that is what we do. We create our own hells. Yeah, in our own minds. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's like we constantly just sit in our own depravity. Like mm. it, is, it is what humans do best. So it makes sense that the construction of hell would reflect that because we also created hell because it's made up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I've, I've had discussions with teachers at school like in high school um religion teachers with religion teachers that um the, why are they all christian uh because it's catholic school and why are all religious teachers christian all religion teachers mm. are they in other countries oh, well, do they, do they teach religion in other countries or is that an australian thing i don't know i'm not sure 
I have no idea. I can't answer that question for you. Okay. But um, was that someone actually said to me that hell is supposed to be a metaphor. Like it's not really supposed to be a, but that's... Cop out? Cop out, yeah. A little bit, a little bit of a cop out. Because that's what, I think that's what uh, people say about any story in the Bible that... It's meant to be a metaphor. That they can't explain. Yeah. Is that it's, oh, it's meant to be a metaphor. Like any story where like historians has come back and gone, no, no, that's not true. They go, yeah, yeah but it's just a metaphor. Um, as opposed to, yeah, it actually happened that way. And that's one of the things that that Richard Dawkins guy says, um, that he inter had an interview with um, one of the cardinals or maybe a bishop uh, in England. Mm. And he said that most of the people he's spoken to in the past, when he brings up particular stories from the Bible, he goes, yeah, they say, yeah, that didn't actually happen. It's supposed to be a metaphor. It's a story that is supposed to teach you some sort of moral value. Yeah. Um, but he said that this particular actually believe actually it, is like yeah no, no those things actually all happen like the prodigal son is a real story like that happened it's history it's not um, well the prodigal son is a very believable story oh for sure like yeah even if it's just a what are they called parables parable yeah, yeah even if it's just a story like nothing crazy happens to it this dude leaves he comes back and mm. the father welcomes him back with open arms mm. even though he was like the bad son. I had this discussion with my, my grandparents are highly, yeah. religious, heavily religious. I had this discussion with them the other day. What does prodigal actually mean? Because I've forgotten. I hate you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what the dictionary definition yeah, is. Yeah, I can't remember. But I guess someone who has left or... I'm not sure it was because I think when we were talking who has about fallen it... I think when we were talking about grace. it, it's supposed to be like... Um, I'm probably getting this very, very wrong, but when they were discussing it, they were saying that when looking back on that parable, a lot of people say it should actually be called the prodigal father, not the prodigal son. Uh, so it's, and I think it's actually the father being loyal to a fault Yeah, is almost what prodigal means. So prodigal is almost being loyal to a fault. It's not, because um, I think almost the way that most people think about it is uh, like almost like the prophesized son, like he leaves and then he comes back. Yeah. Um, just like the father knew he would sort yeah. of thing. Um, but yeah, we're going a little bit down the road. Do you think hole. you could be that forgiving of a friend? Like if your friend, car friend came back to you and was like, hey, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I was a really bad friend mm. and was like very much yeah. actually apologetic. You'd yep. be like, okay, let's yeah. never speak of it again. Yeah, yeah, I could be. Okay. I'm, I'm probably a little bit too forgiving sometimes for some things. Yeah. Um, I, I get over things pretty quick though. Like I try not to. I know, I know how bad it is for your own mental well-being to to hold things to like dwell that. on things for too long. Um, that's why, like, I bring it up now and it annoys me when I'm talking about it. But yeah. it's not something I think about when I'm. Yeah. And not. it seemed like it was the behavior that you were annoyed at more so than the person. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that, like, you would just frown on that in your friends. Like, you don't want to associate with them. Yeah. But it's not that you would, you know, mm. kill that. And person. any friend, any friend that has any anyone that's done me wrong previously, like, if they come up to me and they go afterwards and they're like, "Look, I'm sorry, I stuffed up. I really do apologize." Then generally, I'm like, "Yeah, don't worry about it. Like, water under a bridge." But this particular effort, like the one that you're thinking of from years ago. Um, the mutual friend that we had, mm. yeah, like it never, admittedly I've never brought it up with him, so yeah. like that's partially my fault as well, like that's something that I internalised and never spoke to him about, Yeah. but he's also never, like he no, he's not stupid, he knows what I'm frustrated, what I'm annoyed about and why yeah. I stopped hanging out with him and why when I see him around I'm pretty cold with him. Yeah. He knows that and he's never made Tried an to effort bridge to bridge that or apologise for that, so I have no interest in doing it myself but in saying that like maybe that's I need to be the bigger person and be like hey this is what you did that really annoyed me mm. and see what he says um, but even like the one with the car like I have brought it up and I've been like man that really pissed me off and it's like straight away like an excuse it's not a like you're not going to own the fact that you fucked up it's yeah. a it's a oh yeah but she really had to go I was going to come back after I dropped her off like sort of thing it's like I don't give a fuck. Like, your missus is a prick too. If you, if she's that self-centered that she can't hang around for an extra twenty minutes to help me out, like, yeah, 
like, I don't really, you need to realize that either you need to get out from underneath your missus thumb or there's some sort of serious issue there where she doesn't see the problem with that either. Yes. Yeah, like, like you're both Even if she's people. not my friend, like regardless, someone like, if, if I was stuck and the tow truck driver came and pulled me out from a bog and then the towies car broke down, I'm paying him to pull me out and I'm still gonna hang out with until his car gets sorted. Yeah. Like I don't even know the guy and I'm still gonna hang out until he's yeah. sorted. Um, but you can't do that for a friend. Yes. Or you can't do that for your boyfriend's friend. Like that yeah. just seems silly to me. Like even if you're gonna come back, what you're gonna leave your mate stranded in the bush for 45 minutes or you go sort some other stuff out. It's like, nah. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Mm. So for me, that didn't seem, that's not a warranted excuse. That's just a, you not wanting to admit that you fucked up. Yeah. And to me, that is something that will allow me to then hold a grudge is the fact that you're not willing to try and reconcile the situation properly. Yeah, I know. I completely agree. Mm. I agree with every single point you said, and it still makes me angry to this minute. I wish mm. you never told me that story. <laughs> Whereas, but in saying that, like, I'm probably being a little bit of a hypocrite because I'm sure there's been things that I've done wrong where I've been too proud to actually make an apology for it. Like, yeah, I mean, I've burnt friendships and relationships mm. in the past by just being a bad per person and mm. bad friend. Mm. And I'm sure I've... I'm sure there might be one person that eventually listens to this and who's like, that Andy is a big person to talk because yeah. he left me. Are you talking about me? Was it me? <laughs> <that I'm laughs> <not>? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, for sure. Like I've definitely, I'm sure, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's bridges that I've burnt just by being prideful. Yeah. Being like too stuck up to say sorry about something and what you see as a big problem like the loyalty thing mm. to them might not be even be an issue yeah like they might have thought of it as ah oh, you know that's not actually a big deal mm. he knows what he's doing he'll be out of there in a jiffy yeah like yeah. they might not have connected the dots connected the dots mm. sometimes incompetence is not malice yeah that's true as well yeah, yeah. So you might just you might really dumb yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like they could just be really dumb and just not think things through. Yeah. That's we true both know well. people. Like, I mean, I get it all the time when someone, like a customer or something, doesn't message me or mm. they do something weird and I'm like, this person has wronged me. They must feel my wrath. Mm. But really, they just either think something slipped their mind or they just mm. weren't thinking about it in that way. For sure. And there's like, it's like that with anything. Like, you have things that can really tick you off that just. Seriously, someone didn't remember, like... Yeah. Like, that's like, um, I was having this conversation with the other day, um, and actually, she might actually listen to the podcast, so I'm sorry I forgot your birthday, but this is a uh, PT client of mine, um, and I asked, like, five times, like, when's your birthday again? When's your birthday again? Like, I know it's coming up, I know it's coming up, I know it's coming up, and then I forgot it on, on the, the day, day, on yeah. the day itself. Um, and, like... She's okay with it. Like she poked fun at me for a little bit, but like she doesn't really care that much. Um, but I know some girls, for example, that like if they're best, if they're not even best friend, if like close-ish friends forget to call them on their birthday, it's mm. like, oh, like you forgot my birthday. Are you kidding? And like that's a like it'll take them weeks to get over that. Yeah. And I'm like, whereas I don't know if that's a girl thing, but like if a mate doesn't message me for my birthday, like, like they were busy. You know mm. what I mean? Like, or especially like if you're having drinks for your birthday, like you have drinks for your birthday three days after your birthday, they come out and they'll be like, hey, birthday. And you'll be like, oh, it was actually a couple of days ago. And they go, okay, cool. Yeah, so that's like, it. That's it. That's the end of it. Whereas like a girl's like, or this particular girl anyway, is like, you didn't say happy birthday to me on my birthday. It's like, man, it's, people were busy. It wasn't mm. a big deal. Like people don't have to say happy birthday to you on your birthday. And also people are very like, I mean, Every single person is only interested in their self. Their world yeah. revolves around them. For sure. So because of that, if you're in high proximity to me, mm. then maybe I'll remember. Mm. Or if it shows up on my Facebook feed. Yes. And if I check Facebook. Facebook's a big one. Facebook's a big one for remembering birthdays. Actually, I have a funny story about that. On my 21st, um, for some reason, I think just after, I think my birthday before, I'd gone on Facebook and turned off the my birthday setting so that people didn't get notified. That Mine's it was my turned birthday. off as well. Yeah, I turned it off so that people didn't um, wish you on Facebook. Wish me on Facebook, and just so they didn't post um, 
Dick ridiculous pics. photos from a party that had happened like a couple of weeks prior and I was like, oh, that's fair. I don't want them on my wall. So I took it off and then I had every intention on putting it back on because I knew all that would die down and it wouldn't matter. And then the next year for my 21st, I'd forgotten to turn it back on, turn it back on. And I was like slightly offended that like only, and that was like four or five years ago. Yeah. Four or five years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was slightly offended that like a select few friends didn't say anything to me for my birthday. And I was like, ah, oh, that sucks. Not because I was thinking you guys should remember when my birthday is just cause I know Facebook sends the notification. I was mm. like, it means they got the notification and didn't wish me a happy birthday. I was yeah. like, ah, oh, that sucks. And then I got a phone call from my cousin that night and he goes is it your birthday today and yeah. i was like yeah it is and he goes man i didn't get a facebook notification he's like and i didn't want to call you to say happy birthday without being sure so i went on your facebook thing to and check. tried to find your birthday yeah. and your birthday's not on there and i was like ah that's right that explains it i turned it off yeah. so then i had to turn it back on um and i was like oh i was getting all my knickers in a knot for no reason <laughs> like, yeah and that's yeah, it exactly um and it's so easy to get riled up like that yeah, for no reason, really. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I was still with friends on my birthday. Like, it doesn't matter. Mm. But the people yeah. that count will eventually find a way. Mm, for sure. Like, I've only got maybe my family members and one or two friends whose birthdays I know off by heart, mm. whose birthdays I remember. And it's generally... What's my birthday? I don't know. I know it's in August, isn't it? I've only used that word once in this podcast. <laughs> but <laughs> close to using it again. I don't know when your birthday is. To be That's okay. I don't know where your when yours is. Is yours coming up? Well, it's past. Oh, it's already past. Yeah. What did you do? Did you do anything? No. Did we do something for your birthday? No, I was compete. No, was I competing? I did. I did a strongman comp on that day. My birthday is the eighth of September. Mm, I didn't even wish you a happy birthday. Didn't you? Don't think so. But again, like, I don't care because I don't... It's not on Facebook and you don't advertise your birthday at all. No. I mean, like, once, you know, once you pass 40... Oh, wait, yes, I did. I came over to dinner for your birthday. Oh, that's right. We yeah, had, we had... We did a podcast yeah, the next we did. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I was, yeah, yeah, I was definitely there. And then you uh, didn't end up competing in that comp the next day, did you? No, no, I did compete. You did that. compete, yeah. okay, yeah. That was when I was sick, remember? Yeah, yeah. No, we did a podcast that morning. No, the day after the Strongman comp. We did the podcast. Yeah. yeah, we had dinner on Friday night. Yeah, your yeah we did Saturday, it. Saturday, yeah. you competed, then we did podcast Sunday. That's right. Yeah. At your house. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now did I wish you sense. for your birthday this year? I don't know. Can't remember. But 26 isn't a big year for you, so. No. <laughs> Whereas 40 for you is. It is a big year, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually was thinking the other day when I was, I know I mentioned this on yesterday's podcast, if it ever gets released, um, that there's that. For last week's podcast. Last week's podcast, yeah. For the four, the brewery, the Four Pines Brewery in Manly, yeah. I want to find an area where there's a couple of, even if they're just craft brewers, mm. um, fairly close succession. And rather than doing a uh, pub crawl, pub crawl, do a brewery crawl. So do yeah. like brewery, brewery, brewery for my birthday. Because now that it opens in October as well, like I don't have anything on in March, like so I don't have to be. Like my last two birthdays, I haven't drunk on my birthday. Wait, your birthday's in March? Mm. 26th? No. Is that close? Yeah. 20th. No, 17th. 17th? Yeah. Ah. St. Patrick's Day. Wow. Your birthday's really close to Cush's. Yeah, I think we've discussed this before. When's Cush's? 13th. Yeah, really close to Cush's. Yeah. And that's, it's funny, I only remember some, the friends whose birthdays I do remember. Are close to yours? Are just like really close. So I've got a friend. Who was born on the same day as you? Who's born, no, who's, yeah. <laughs> I've got a friend that uh, is born April 17th. Yeah. So like I always remember his birthday. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly a month after mine. Like I probably wouldn't even remember my sister's birthday if it wasn't exactly six months after mine. Really? Mm. Do you remember Josh's birthday? Yes. But it's only because it's five days before hers. Ah, uh, okay. You, do you remember your parents' birthdays? Yes. Okay. Only because, I mean, the only ones that I had to remember for a long time. What's do you remember I, your parents? Yeah, kind of. No, it was very confusing. No, I remember dad's, mom's. This is good because like, I hope my mom never listens to the Uneducated Opinions podcast. Anyway. Because, mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I hope your mom never, I, there, I also hope your mom never listens to it. I've told her not to listen to it. Oh, good. I've also told my mom not to listen to it because there are things that we talk about in here that they just have no reason to know about or they don't want to hear me talk about things that way. 
Mm. Especially because my mum is quite religious too. Mm, for sure. Yeah. And I don't my mum's not super. My mum's probably closer to agnostic than she is anything else. But she's. I think you're not meant to say that word anymore. Really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, no, but mum's still fairly religious. Like mm. still. Well, that's what I think. She probably doesn't want to hear me talking about it either. And, and you know what? Like, like we started talking about this. At this I started talking about um, God. Like, I don't. Like I said, I don't care if there's a God. If there is a God, like I'm happy to believe in Him, Her, whatever it is, mm. a higher power. Mm. My problem is actually with organized religion. Mm. That's the thing I don't like. Mm. I think they were, you know, they were created to control the populace. Mm. Oh God, I sound like a conspiracy nut. Mm, you are though. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. Yeah, JFK was an inside job. Probably. So was 9-11. I don't know about that. But what really gets Aliens me... Aliens exist. What really gets me is the ice wall at the end of the world. <laughs> the world is flat. <laughs> the earth is definitely flat, yeah. Yeah, and it's all CGI, all the photos that we have from... From space? It's from space. Well, yeah, they have to make it look like that because mm. it's hard to fill, like, the whole thing yeah, yeah, yeah. into yeah. space. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's underneath the flat Earth, then? Nothing. What is it? It's just Earth, China on this side, and then space all around. <laughs> China's <laughs> on underneath. Yeah, because, like, when you go from America, you dig to China, right? Oh, yeah, true. Dig straight through. Yeah. That's true as well. With your Acme pickaxe. And mm. So what's your problem with organized religion? Oh, just like... Drive the point home. Drive the point home. Um, one, uh, like they, they obviously started to control the populace. That's how we derive laws and rules. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the next case from there is that they're outdated now. Like our rule... I mean, I get that our rules and policies have derived from... Christianity, a lot of them, mm. but we don't need the religion side of things anymore. Mm. We have purpose. It was a good stepping stone. Yeah, mm. but we're past that. We can control people with other things now through a fiduciary system mm. with money. Mm. That's literally how the world runs now. Yeah. As opposed to when it did run with religion. Mm. Yeah, that's fair enough. I see your point. Do you... Um, so your point that you made about that scientist that you was a documentary that you watched yeah it is old it might even be like um 60s that great scientist leonardo dicaprio okay anyway <laughs> i am kidding I'm yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> um that uh no i think da vinci was actually a um I guess religious the, person oh religious person i think he was it's kind of it, i think most scientists that long ago probably were. Yeah, they probably had to be. They probably Even had if to be. they, ha otherwise they'd get burnt at the stake. Yeah, because they're witches. Mm. Mm, for sure. Do you, do you, does the thought of uh, potential eternal damnation ever cross your mind and be like, oh, maybe I should? I mean, nothing can be worse than this cruel world. <laughs> I don't know, eternity, maybe. Yeah. Well, like Richard Dawkins said, eternity mm. of anything would get pretty drab. Even yeah. eternity in heaven seems pretty boring. Mm. Do you know what heaven is, though? No. no. Maybe but, heaven is not the same forever. Yeah, what would, what would really... Well, in the Bible, it says heaven is an eternity of just almost nothing. Mm. I feel like it would be... Um, I feel like... I do feel like it's a metaphor, but I feel like... Uh, it's if, if it's real, it's a feeling. It is a feeling. It's not a place. It's a feeling, and it's feeling that, from mortality's sake, you can't describe or understand. I mm. I would imagine that it would be like it would be feeling at peace, and that's it. Yeah. Like it would be a wash of okay, it's done. I'm fine with it being done done but like it's not like oh, yeah, I, understand I, I don't I don't imagine that it would be something that you could fathom as if it's real I don't believe that it is a feeling that you would be able to fathom from a human point of view like um, the fourth dimension 
Exactly. It's like people talk about like with psychedelic drugs, like you like no one if you haven't done psychedelic drugs, like you can't no one's gonna be able to explain to you what the feeling is like. Yeah. Like it's like it's not an explainable thing. To yeah, someone. like someone who hasn't used their glutes before trying to explain them what it feels like, like to, to use, use your glutes. glutes. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Hundred percent. I remember the first time I used my glutes properly in deadlifts. It was in a workout at the gym, and I'd just done a whole bunch of like pelvic floor work uh, with physio. And I went to the gym and started warming up some deadlifts, and I was like, "Ooh, I can feel that." And then I went for a run at the end of the session, and I could feel like how hard it was to run with weak glutes. Yeah. And that was the first time I'd ever experienced that. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I've actually feel like I must have used these because running feels really awkward right now yeah as opposed to previously like hurt my back to run afterwards but that's about it yeah because you use your lower back lower back yeah erect is to run well that's a strong part of your spine right so that's how you're supposed to lift well your erect is also help extend your leg hmm. badly <laughs> yeah 100 percent. No, actually, actually they don't extend your leg what they do is they rotate you so you're like not actually running like this but you're running like this that well that's what happens right your extenders can help to yes yeah yeah. but your extenders can help to extend the hip that's what sorry that's what i meant but like and in turn but they will do like what actually happens is you end up doing this not this yeah okay yeah i um had someone a biomechanics lecturer explain to me once how um one muscle that does not necessarily act at a joint in a perfect biomechanical world still influences other joints. Mm. So to say like, for example, I think the best example is like the calf, right? Yeah. So when you come into, whilst the calf does flex the knee, yeah, the calf has something to do with flexing the knee and extending the ankle. Yeah. Although it has nothing to do with what the hip does, I'm gonna stand up to explain it to you. Yeah. Although it has nothing to do with actually moving the hip physically yeah. in a perfect biomechanical world, when I'm in this position, when I use my calf to extend, to flex the knee, my femur travels forward. And if there was just acting around that joint, that is also causing extra hip flexion. Yeah. Does that make sense? So even though the calf is not directly acting on the hip, when the calf flexes the knee, or extends yeah. the ankle. It changes. It changes the hip angle. Yeah. Which but I thought was really cool. Because that's a really good way of then, that's a really good example of how working down a chain affects other joints. Yes and no. Go. Okay. Yes in the sense that that, makes, that, that works only when there is gravity involved. Because as opposed was, to when we're not yeah if we're if you're, in, if you're in zero gravity yeah or if you were supported uh like laying on your back or something mm. then that might not be the case yes um the only reason that that happens is because you've got to keep your center of mass over your base of support mm. Yes, I see what you're saying, yes, but... Whereas the argument for up chain, down the chain mm. can actually happen at a fundamental movement uh, patterning level that if I took you from where you are to zero gravity, you might still have some strategies involved in moving that that affects upstream. For example, let's say that you brace instead of bracing through your abdomen and uh deeper core musculature as you move your hip or move your calf you might brace through your lats and in that's zero a, gravity no uh, that's your fundamental movement basis yeah. and that may cause twisting that may cause your intercostals to uh, to shift so that your rib cage basically just gets glued together. Mm. And if I moved you to zero gravity, that's potentially still your pattern unless you've, you're actively trying to train out of it. 
So what I'm just saying is they're not independent of each other. No, no, they're not independent of each other. But what I'm saying is like in a world where you don't make other adjustments. Yeah. So even if you're in a zero gravity, if we're in zero gravity and I use my, let's not use the calf, that's a shitty example. And I use, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, I just worked through that in my head. Yeah, you're right. Zero gravity does change it. But yeah. How often are you in zero how gravity? How often are you in zero yeah. gravity? Yeah. But I, like, I'm just thinking of it as at a, as, at a like, like as a basic understanding of what you'd show someone, mm. you, you can say that. Oh, you would never show someone that. Yeah. No, you would never show someone that doesn't have at least a pretty good understanding of biomechanics, what I just showed you. Yeah. But I guess like the point that I'm, that the point that he was trying to make was like the, when, I don't even know how we got to this, but when analyzing movement um, on a biomechanics point of view, like through like kinematics, for example, um, which is like film yeah. uh, and ang joint angles and that sort of thing, is to say that something that happens at joint A, being the ankle, can very easily influence what happens at joint C, despite the fact the musculature around joint A has no direct influence. Yeah. Like the musculature is doing nothing, but just the fact that joint A changes, that changes joint B, which changes joint C, joint yeah. C. Yeah, I can see that. Which, I mean, I... Which changes segment angle as well. Yep. If that makes sense. So, like, if you were to take it to the most, uh, I guess, basic element, and that, let's say that's the squat, say we're doing a squat, something that's happening at the joint, at the uh, ankle, can influence what then happens at the hip. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. It was just the, the rationale that your lecturer gave you, mm. I disagreed with. What the perfect biomechanics world? Yeah, because yeah. like it, that can be if you take it out of context of that positioning. Yeah, yeah. Things change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. But yeah, it, I hundred percent agree that what happens down here can affect up here. What happens up yeah. here can affect down here. How did we get to this? I don't know. Well, what happens in heaven <laughs> stays in heaven because I assume there's zero gravity in heaven. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, movement's different. Movement is yeah, different. Functionality is different. Especially movement without a body. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, we're pretty much there, so we should probably wrap it up. Cool. We've only got two minutes to wrap it up. I intro it, you can wrap up. Okay. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching the Uneducated Opinions podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Uneducated Opinions. You can find Steve at Steve Norman 250 on Instagram, and you can find me at Train with Andy. If you like this episode, please... Uh, share it, uh, give us a five star rating on iTunes. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell. That way you know when the next episode is up. Thank you so much for listening guys. And we'll see you next time. Mm. And if you disagree with any of Andy's religious rambling, then feel free to let us know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can disagree with what we said. It just makes mm. you wrong. Yeah. <laughs> see you guys.